I'm Leo Warder for Kit Guru. This is my PC, which I think I've said twice before in different videos. So this is my PC for July 2017. Uh, it's had an upgrade from a quad core Xeon to a six core Core i7, which is my own damn fault because I should have bought the six core in the first place, but I cheaped out and there we go. Uh, Originally, I was using a Fantex Evolve case. Uh, I have my concerns about the cooling because the intakes and exhaust in that case are fairly limited. I pressed on, that was probably a bad move. I've now reverted to a Pro M, but that's all gonna be in the words and such like. Let's show you what's going on inside. The heart of the thing is Core i7 6 core. It's got a GTX 1080 graphics card and a bunch of liquid cooling. The power supply is a Seasonic Prime Titanium. This particular one is 850 watt. In my last PC, I had a 750 watt, uh, either of which would be uh, perfectly adequate for this uh, job. The Prime Titanium works absolutely gorgeously well, really quiet, looks smart. What more can I want from a power supply? And, and fully modular, very efficient. Uh, the amount of heat coming out of that power supply is next to nothing. The only thing I wouldn't mind trying is the new fanless, which is uh, imminent and promised for a little while now we saw it at Computex uh, the idea of ditching another fan I'm, I'm all in favor but uh, whether it actually yields an actual benefit for me that remains to be seen uh, the memory is uh, Corsair RGB DDR4 so that's controlled by their link software uh, the other peripherals which are around the back are all NZXT so I've got uh, an NZXT internal USB uh, hub kit because this uh, EVGA motherboard only has the one USB port internally and I needed two. One for the Hue Plus lighting kit for NZXT and one for the Grid Plus V2 fan controller. So they're around the back. The fan controller obviously controlling all the VADA fans and the uh, Hue Plus giving the uh, static pink lighting display that uh, uh, is quite appealing to my eyes. It does all sorts of marquees and such like, but they're just too leery for my tastes. This is a work machine. I also play games on it. It's connected to a pair of 4K displays, but the main work that it does is 4K video editing. And that is an absolute system killer. Quad core with hyper-threading, so eight threads, just gets thrashed mercilessly. The thing is my previous graphics card was a liquid called GTX 980. And when you're using Adobe Premiere, uh, you don't actually use the graphics card necessarily uh, for straight uh, grunt work is when you're doing effects and such like the graphics swings into action and you suddenly realize your GTX 980 goes from zero load to wang, uh, 90, 100%. Uh, similarly, the uh, CPU just spent its life when I was uh, rendering videos pegged at just under 100%. So I've chucked in the uh, 6 core and now all is good. It sits just under 100%, but the rendering times are significantly reduced. Premiere uses 6 cores, 12 threads very nicely. The GTX data when I was scrubbing backwards and forwards in 4K video, uh, that will sort of go 50-60% just moving through the video. It is remarkable the load required for your system to do 4K video, but such is life and there we go. There's no point in complaining about it, it's the way of the world. So I've got a 240 radiator at the front, a 120 radiator in the roof. All the liquid cooling hardware in this PC is by AlphaCool, with the exception of the pump top on the AlphaCool pump, which is, uh, that's a VP655 pump, which is uh, AlphaCool's take on a D5. Uh, the pump top is EKWB, the pump mount is EKWB, because the mounts they do very well, and then frankly, when it comes to the cosmetics of the pump top, I happen to think EK does a better job than AlphaCool. The um, other part of the hardware that is not their hardware is uh, Mayhem's Pastel Pink Coolant, uh, which is the same coolant I used in my previous build. I, I just <laughs> like pink. Red and black have been done to death. Other colours can little, look a little bit strident. So yellow, for example, works in a black case. Uh, but uh, there we go. The cooling hardware works very nicely. I've made two personal decisions three personal decisions when it comes to it. There's one gash bit in the build, which is that the pump mount is on three screws rather than four because there's a cutout where the fourth screw would ideally go. I could have done something with that just to make it work, but it's perfectly sound and secure, so no real need. That's the one slightly iffy bit with this build, but it's not a problem. The two choices that I've made are that the fans are outboard of the radiator. So on the intake, they're uh, pushing the air through the radiator. On the uh, uh, 120 in the roof, uh, it's pulling air through the radiator. I've done that simply because I don't want fan blades whirring inside the case. I uh, don't want to stick my fingers in there and get them attacked. Uh, in terms of function, it makes frankly very little difference whether your fans are in push or pull. Uh, so it, functionally it works and that's the reason why I've got the fans outboard of both the radiators. The other thing is the order of the loop. 
the only rule with cooling, uh, liquid cooling, is that the reservoir has to keep the pump wet. I mean, obvious. Uh, beyond that, the order of the loop, uh, it makes no difference. It just doesn't. Um, whether your radiator feeds your graphics card or whatever, it makes no difference. So the order is that the reservoir feeds to the pump, the pump goes through the graphics card, goes to the CPU block, goes to the top radiator, goes to the front radiator, goes back to the reservoir. It works. And um, one way that you know it's working is there's no gurgling. If you get air in the system or you have a kind of a waterfall effect going on, which can get quite annoying, that suggests the system's not very well set up. This cooling loop works perfectly well. I'm very pleased with it. I haven't transferred over the hardware from my previous system, not because I didn't like the hardware I was using, but because I had to build this system, make sure it worked, and then transfer over my SSDs and my hard drive from the previous system. I didn't want any downtime with this. It's a working system. So the motherboard, um, the plans I have for that motherboard, the memory and all the rest of it, uh, I haven't stopped using those uh, brands, the ASRock motherboard. I was intended to put a bits power block on it, uh, G-Skill memory. Uh, I haven't ditched that stuff because I didn't like them or they didn't work well. I just needed to build a second system, which is this. So this is completely different hardware and then transfer the drives. And it worked. Uh, the, the transfer or the migration would be the correct word was absolutely flawless. So there we go. This is my PC for the time being. Uh, as I say, I think it's the third I've shown you and it's uh, working well. Been up and running for about a week now. Uh, and it's helped rendering times of 4K videos hugely. The longer term plan is to go more multi-core. Um, whether that's Ryzen 7 or Threadripper remains to be seen. So I'm on six core, 12 thread now. Ryzen 7, obviously eight core, 16 thread. Seems a bit wimpish. Uh, Threadripper is gonna be the big step. Um, I'm not too fussed about the uh, heat of Threadripper. That really won't be a problem. I'll be able to handle that. But uh, it has to perform. And if it performs, then Threadripper is going to be it. Otherwise, I think Ryzen 7. But anyway, for now, it's Leo Gone 6 Core. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kick Guru, click to subscribe. I'm Leo Water for Kick Guru. This is my PC.